Welcome everyone. Kevin Carpenter here with Brett. Brett Brown. Hello. Glad to have you. We're getting ready for C++ now. We have uh, three weeks officially like, you know, I think it, you know, we got to count time zones in there, but actually 30 minutes from now in three weeks, we'll be doing our keynote kickoff in, in Aspen. I'm excited. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too. We got my plane tix, tickets all booked and everything. And it's a beautiful thing because the airport's actually open the whole week this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we don't have to worry about the boost bus and all that this year. Yeah. So I have, So my first question is, how long have you, how many times, when was your first time you went to CPP now? C++ now? I want to say my first one was in 2021. It was definitely uh, post-COVID. Uh, right when things were starting to come back. Was that also when you did your first talk there? Or was that 22? I, I was, I believe so. My first talk was me and my colleague, Dan Russo talking That's about, right. uh, talking about how we think packaging might be viable with things yep. where places we can get started. And then you've worked with, um, Bill Hoffman too, with CMake, cause you did a talk with him That's at right. CPPCon. That's right. I like so, team up talks a lot. <laughs> keeps me honest, keeps me motivated. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's good learning when you can bounce stuff back and forth. And it's kind of funny because I'll do a lightning talk about the lunch system, I think, when we're at C now, because doing stuff solo is sometimes really hard. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to that part, like modules and stuff. So you work at Bloomberg, which, mm -hmm. you know, I just have to say thanks to Bloomberg because Bloomberg, you know, every conference I seem to do stuff with, Bloomberg supports. So um, yeah, Bloomberg does a great job of that. Yep. Yeah. Um, but so modules, uh, your, your talk this year, is is this something that like, what part, how is this part of C++ dear to you? Because it seems like modules and the kind of management of projects seems to be. Well, um, I think modules has a lot of interesting work left to do. So most of the times I talk about C++ modules, it's from that perspective of trying to help people understand what's still left to do. There's a lot of great introductory talks about how the syntax might work. There's a few talks that even get into how to use the technology such as it exists. But there, I, I tend to focus when I'm in public, when I'm doing papers for the community or writing, I tend to help them understand like what's mm -hmm. still left to do so people don't get ahead of themselves too much. Um, healthy expectations help. This talk isn't about modules. I say, I used yeah. the for, word interface in the title. I didn't, hopefully that didn't imply modules. I, I, that happened to be before I did a CPPCon talk about CMake modules, like the modules yeah. in the CMake language for CMake. And I yeah. think some people thought I meant C++ modules there too. Oh, uh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, actually, I want to say that's what I thought too when I first saw that one. So I was like, oh, all right. Yeah, I don't know how else to say the modules for it's too long of a title to say modules for CMake, not C++ modules, just the CMake ones. That's that's too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and modules and CMake, that can be its own thing, too, because I know that we have, you know, five or six. And, you know, I mean, that's small, I think, compared to some companies, but we have five or six customs that we run on all of our build tools just to be able to pull everything in, you know, because you're using right. custom libraries and, yep. and it does make it easier. That'll come up a little bit in my talk this year. Gotcha. But it seems like you do a lot of, you know, when I look at the talks you're doing, it seems like project ma project management or managing, managing large projects seems to be kind of a bit of your forte and experience, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, sp I spent a lot of time thinking about uh, code bases, um, especially large ones, because Bloomberg mm -hmm. has a large code base, and that's part of my day job. But I also think about like any code base. How many of us feel like we have way more time than we know what to do with, and we really want to keep fiddling <laughs> with our project settings? The answer is nobody. Like Everybody wants it to be really simple. And especially the kinds of people that really uh, are excited to go to C++ now, they tend to really like writing libraries. They love the C++ syntax. They, yeah. they love like experimenting and, and uh, sometimes abusing it. Um, <laughs> so they really don't want to think about other things because that's where all their energy is going into. And so, so this talk is kind of about like, okay, well, take some of that energy, do, the mid do this at least this much work, and you can maybe focus on your C++ code more. Um, or just as importantly, maybe your users can too. Um, it's possible you're doing a pure research project. Fine, right? <laughs> put it in a put it in a compiler explorer link, and nobody needs to compile against it anyway. But in real <laughs> life, like we're sh you're writing code, someone else is using it. I'm writing code, someone else is using it, or I'm using somebody else's code, right? And yeah. so, like, how do we 
how, how, our, how do our projects interact? And that's really what my, my talk's about. It's kind of trying to get us to open our minds a little bit to, okay, I'm used to writing code, but what about, but you don't ship code exactly. You ship a project, right? So how right. does that work? Interesting. So it's kind of funny because I was talking with uh, Zach the other day. We were talking that difference of coding for libraries versus coding for uh, applications because, you know, right. me, I do a lot more application coding, but I have to agree with C++ now, the things that I end up learning because of the depth of experience there, it's, um, you know, I may not write libraries, but when I go back and end up writing code in my application, I've watched something in a talk that makes me go, oh, I should probably think about this in a different way, you know, and yeah. from the performance aspect or from maintainability and, and everything like that. So, I have to say, I'm super excited to see your talk because the little bit of libraries that we write that are even internally used, it's like, you know, someone else is going to consume that at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I always endeavor to make all of our code more uniform, not like in a, not going to want to force people to do things my way or something. I just, I just find that the more you have to think about each project, the harder it is to scale all that, to, to scale it, the harder it is to have lower effort per bit of code too. So right. when I write application code, by the way, I write a library and then I have a really tiny main. Um, so like there's like a little executable thing that I wear up to my build system, but mostly I'm just writing one more library and that's the way gotcha. I try to do it. And so I, whenever I do something, I try to do, um, I do it the same way I did last time and I do it the same way the person next to me would do it and that sort of right. thing. So I spent a lot of time um, and Bloomberg over the last five years or so making that more and more approachable. It's never perfect, mm -hmm. just like there's no right. perfect class design and there's no perfect uh, monad like that can you, you can use everywhere, you know? Yep. Um, there's always things you have to adapt and adjust, but um, I, that's that's the ideal. That's the principle we're shooting for, I think. Um, and I think we're pretty far from it on the C++ side of things. <laughs> so I have plenty of things to talk about. And, I, and you know, my, my talks tend to be a little more ever, evergreen than you would expect. Uh, that's <laughs> my funny. C, C make modules talk from 2019, you could, this works fine now. I, yeah. I would maybe add a few tips of things that came out in the last five years, but pretty much all the same stuff works just as much right now. So It's always good when a talk age as well. <laughs> I'm okay if it doesn't. Some of my talks I'd rather didn't. Like I'd rather be like, hey, look at those crazy packaging ideas. He was way off. We got this great packaging system now. I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. Well, let's do that. <laughs> that's but. true. It's it's funny though, because I do have one talk where I'm like, yeah, go go look at anything else. Just just don't look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one of those yet. I'm sure maybe this is the year. This could be my my year. <laughs> I give a talk and I'm like, eh, I don't know. But to be fair, I never watch my talks because I just can't. I just don't like to hear my own voice is one of those things, you know. I, I absolutely understand. I don't watch my own interviews. Um, so I, I feel for you. I, I, I understand that totally. Yeah. So what's your favorite part about C++ now? I mean, you go to lots of conferences because I see you at lots of conferences. C++ yeah. now, what do you like most about it? There's a few things. Um, the town's smaller, so it definitely has a kind of a small town vibe, which is pretty unique for a conference. You don't usually yeah. get that. It's usually in a more convention center -y right. place or something like that. Um, it's it's very rich in people, like you said, with depth of expertise. Mm -hmm. So it's it's in some ways it's almost like a university research scramble camp thing, um, focusing on C++ and the and the related topics. I like that a lot. Um, it's different than the ISO meetings, which I've been to a few of those too. Um, that also has a lot of depth of expertise, but mm -hmm. it tends to be like a different flavor. Like the, the, it tends to be broader somehow yeah. at C++ now. Like you'll, there's a lot of, like you don't have to be thinking like, well, what about ISO standard ease and what's going to happen in seven years from now? You can oh, talk right. about okay. what worked for you this year and, and right. you know, talk about, hey, let's team up about something right now. Um, and, you know, the overflow from the boost culture is also really interesting people there is a lot of people that, that actually do ship code yeah um, i like that have you used so you know because c plus plus now came from BoostCon, how much do you use boost uh, personally i don't yeah <laughs> weirdly enough i write more python these days <laughs> than c plus plus because I'm, I'm working on large scale code bases and, right. and you're, you're wrangling a lot of data that sort of thing you're plumbing things um the so I don't I don't get an opportunity too much. Uh, we do use Boost in our Bloomberg uses Boost in its code base. Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't have numbers off the top of my head. Oh, but, that's... Um, especially it's pretty popular in a lot of third party projects. I don't see right. it going anywhere. No, it's I I asked because when I started at my company, you know, one of their big things was is that you know we 
it used to be like the that premise that Boost was just so large because you had to pull in all of Boost if you were going to use something, which isn't the case. You can actually pull in separate libraries, and I understand that now. But it's just kind of that funny thing. Like I've used it a bit, um, but I have to jokingly say, yeah, like you, I I had to learn Python this year, and so. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't the, the, the recent JetBrains study show that like Python beats C is C++ programmer's second favorite language or something like that, or second most used language, something like that. So, you know, uh, we're in good company, I think. <laughs> we are. It's 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 funny because I, uh, you know, I I gave a talk at meeting C++ that was on tooling intuition and and I liked it, but then I gave it again at CPP online. And before I gave it at CPP online, I'd started learning Python. And the thing that I referenced about is like, it was just so interesting because the stuff that I was able to add to the talk is, you know, when you pick up a new language, I mean, like we understand data structures, you know what if is, you know, you know, but to go from C++ to where suddenly like, okay, my spacing actually mattered, you know, now I have this self thing I have to deal with. I, you know, I was like, yeah. But hopefully if I fix one more bug today, everybody can order lunch starting this week for, you know, for the conference. So we shall Good see. <laughs> well, if you use the deducing this, you can have your own self variables in C++ too. So. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, look it up. Look it up. Uh, I, I think I, the examples I see always use, the, always use self yes. uh, to, ref, to reference the object you're, you're manipulating, but. Anyway, I'll have to look okay. that up. If nothing else, yeah. just for a slide for a lightning talk now. Cause <laughs> yes. okay. Right. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So I haven't had a lot of opportunities boost lately. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, it is interesting. It is an interesting dependency. It's a lot like Absale, which is a newer version of boost in some ways that they okay. both like have a lot that kind of, you know, again, you can kind of pick things out if you really want to, but really they, they ship as like a versioned release of these, several dozen things right. all come together. Um, I, and I see that even if I'm digging into the internals of the build systems and the packaging systems and how they interact with those projects, like I could see it, it's kind of laid out that way. Um, for example, just to be specific, because it'll be helpful maybe, if you go into some of those um, metadata files, they'll say you need exactly this version of this other library. Like they'll say okay. it's yeah. not greater than or something like you right. might see in some other dependency management systems. So it's interesting. Um, that they ship that way. It does mean that, like, while you can pick out some libraries, it, you generally want to upgrade them together, right. which adds some interesting dynamics that you don't usually see in uh, third-party libraries. Yeah. In some ways, it's nicer. Um, it is interesting, the whole thing, with because, like, you know, for me with Python, I've been learning with Flask, you know, and so it's, like, the requirements and and how the, the idea of package management where it's just, like, equal to, and it kind of, you know, when I think about the whole modules of C++, we use a lot of open SSL in the credit card industry, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, like, the difference from one or two points of a version in open SSL can be... <laughs> Yeah, OpenSSL, they don't use Semver, the formal yeah. semantic versioning. Yeah, they don't use that. <laughs> so, you know, it's... It they is, have like letters. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate your time this morning. And the thing that's best about C++ now is, you know, everybody watching, you want to come because then we can have more conversations like this, hanging right. out in Stranahan Hall and and breaks and, and all the great talks and... Um, yep. the, the picnic, um, which this year is being catered, which we're super stoked about. Um, nice. Yeah. So, um, but listen, Brett, thank you for your time this morning. I look forward to yeah. seeing you in three weeks in Aspen. Yeah. Great talking to you, Kevin. Have a great day.